We've heard a lot about the rise of antibiotic resistance in recent months. How our profligate use of these wonder drugs and the failure to develop new ones threatens to plunge us back into a medical dark age when treatable infections or minor injuries could once again kill. What we haven't heard much about is the role played in all this by farming. Half of all the antibiotics prescribed in the UK every year are administered to livestock and misuse in farming can contribute to the build-up of overall resistance. Our science editor Tom Fielden reports. Scientists, politicians and healthcare officials, including the government's chief medical officer, Dame Sally Davis, thrash out their differences over the threat posed by antibiotic resistance in a brainstorming session at Westminster earlier this year. No hip replacements, no transplants. Since then, interventions by the World Health Organization and the Prime Minister here in the UK have propelled the issue of antibiotic resistance up the political agenda. But a key theme that emerged during that meeting and has since dropped out of the limelight was the part played by livestock farming. We know that there's a problem, but what we need is to find ways to produce animals in other ways. These are young ones uh, getting ready for breeding. Much of that concern was triggered by a briefing paper from the Alliance to Save Our Antibiotics, which claimed almost half of the antibiotics prescribed in the UK every year are actually administered to farm animals. It's not yet clear what part that might play in human disease, but the overuse of farm antibiotics has played a significant role in the development of resistance in livestock-related bacterial strains, including MRSA and E. coli. The report was commissioned by the Soil Association, and I caught up with its policy director, Peter Melchett, among his longhorn cattle in Norfolk. They're a magnificent animal, one of the oldest breeds in the UK. I'm a vegetarian, but I'm told by beef eaters that the flavour is hard to beat. What we wanted to do with this report was to highlight the fact that antibiotics are still being used routinely in farming, that those antibiotics are often drugs which are crucially important in human medicine, and how if we carry on as we are, we are putting human health at risk. We're fortunate that we can look at a document produced by the UK Veterinary Medicines Directorate. Exact figures and are hard to come by, task, but, but Dr Liam Good from the Royal Veterinary College says about half is probably right. The latest figures from the Veterinary Medicines Directorate show nearly 400 tonnes of antibiotics are administered to livestock every year. It's a huge sum. But perhaps not that surprising when you consider there are more than 208 million farm animals in the UK. I think everyone would, is motivated to use less antibiotics because they, they cost money than just doing it is work. But on the other hand, there's perhaps just as great or even larger motivations to keep the herd healthy, make sure the farm's productive, efficient, cost-effective. And I think that the usage has not been out of control. But absolutely, there's room for improvement globally and, and here in the UK as well. We use these what we call kennel areas here. So if we want healthy farm animals, some element of antibiotic use is probably inevitable. The question then turns on husbandry and whether we can come up with better ways of keeping livestock and minimising the use of drugs. I'm standing in a barn about the size of two tennis courts on Richard Longthorpe's farm near Howden in Yorkshire's East Riding. And, as I'm sure you can hear, I'm surrounded by more than 400 very inquisitive five-week-old pigs. And they're healthy pigs too. Although Richard Longthorpe doesn't rule it out, none of these animals, nor the preceding batch to come through this indoor rearing system, has had to be treated with antibiotics. Some people seem to think arable farmers like nothing better than jumping on their big 30 metre sprayer and wafting pesticides across the countryside. That it couldn't be further from the truth and it's the same with antibiotics. We do it for a reason, but it's a case of using little as possible as much as necessary. But at the end of the day, healthy pigs make money, unhealthy pigs don't. As with manufacturing industries, just in time rather than just in case approach to supply, adopting the mantra of as little as possible, as much as necessary, should help to improve efficiency and drive down the use of antibiotics on the farm. Even so, livestock-related strains of drug-resistant bacteria remain a significant potential threat to human health. 
Our science editor Tom Fielden reporting there. Well, the Royal Society of Medicine is hosting a conference today on antibiotics in farming and we'll be hearing from one of the speakers, Professor David Heyman at Half Past Eight and also about the experience in the Netherlands where they've been trying to crack down on this. Uh, and there's also an infographic, four facts on antibiotic resistance that we've put up on uh, our Twitter feed this morning as well. The time is now 24 minutes to nine. In an age of real fear about resistance to antibiotics and the public health implications of them no longer being effective against infection, how much responsibility lies with their use in agriculture? Half of all the antibiotics used in the UK are given to livestock. Campaigners say that is often done on a routine preventative basis. The Royal Society of Medicine is hosting a conference on this subject today. It's being chaired by Professor David Heyman from the School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and he's also the chairman of Public Health uh, England. And on the line from the Netherlands is Professor Dick Mavius, who's head of the National Reference Laboratory on Antimicrobial Resistance in Animals. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Professor Heyman, how big is the problem of the misuse of antibiotics in agriculture? Well, even if antibiotics are used in the way that they should be used, organisms, bacteria, develop resistance against those antibiotics. So when there's an increased use, either in humans or in agriculture, there's an increase in antibiotics in the environment, in our ecosystem, and there's also an increased chance of r more rapid evolution of resistant strains but of bacteria. Can we combat um, the problem that we have with resistance building up to antibiotics without tackling their use uh, by farmers? No, we have to tackle the use by farmers, by human medicine, and also in agriculture culture where they're used on certain crops and fruit trees. So it's, it's a whole series of activities that have to be done together. Uh, Professor Mavius, what have you done in the Netherlands? Because you changed the rules, didn't you, on, uh, on, the, on the way that antibiotics are prescribed for livestock? Right. Of course, what we saw in the Netherlands is that there was a, what you talked about, a vast overuse uh, or a systematic preventive use of antibiotics in livestock until approximately 2008, and there was concern about, about this and also about the frequent occurrence of resistant organisms and also of those that may have an effect on public health. So that was the driver to implement measures and to, to, to reduce antibiotic use. And the main thing what we did is, uh, it's not, so it's not governmental enforced. The targets that were defined were, was by the government, by the ministries of public health and agriculture, and even by parliament itself. The reduction targets, uh, but the measures were implemented by the private production sectors. Right, but what, when you say uh, targets, was it just, you know, we, we want you to use this number of antibiotics a year, or, or were you being much more specific about the circumstances in, in which antibiotics could be prescribed to livestock? Both. Initially, the targets were, were quite, uh, quite well, uh, blunt to say. They were just aimed at, we want you to reduce uh, total use of antibiotics in livestock by 20% from 2009 to 2011, and by 50% in 2013, and later on even by 70%, which is now the target for 2015. And you have to find ways to do it. That was more or less initially the target, but of course, then we also started talking about uh, what kind of use is still appropriate then, and that yeah. is also very important, talking about which classes of antibiotics have more emphasis than other classes, and do we talking about uh, uh, flock medications or individual medications, so it has been specified in time, but initially it was quite rude, simply we need to reduce. Yeah, uh, Professor Heyman, do we need to do something similar here, some, something that really signals uh, to farmers how big a problem for human health this is? Well, there's, always been, there's already been great progress in decreasing use of antibiotics in the animal sector. In Europe, in general, throughout Europe, there's been a decrease, and, a, and an, in, it's actually not permitted to use antibiotics non-specifically in animal feed as a growth promoter. So what's happened is that agriculture has really cleaned up considerably and by so doing, there's no longer a need to put antibiotics in food for animals, and it's not used, which is a great decrease already. But in addition, then, when infections do occur in animals, they are treated on a case-by-case -case basis, and sometimes antibiotics are used in the herds or flocks around infected animals to prevent right. infection in other animals as Just well.